What's up my fellow Shield Brothers? Shield Brothers 6 here with another A Day in the Life. Today's episode is A Day in the Life, the Armament of the Qin Dynasty. That's right y'all, we're going back to the Qin Dynasty of Ancient China. So with that, let's get started for today. So before we can talk about the armament, we have to talk about who the Qin were and what they did. So the Qin Dynasty. The Qin Dynasty established the first empire in China, starting with efforts in 230 BC during which they engulfed six Zhao Dynasty states. The empire existed only briefly from 221 to 206 BC, but the Qin Dynasty had a lasting cultural impact on the dynasties that followed, as well as their governing structure and linguistic system. So, the history. Named for its heartland in Qin Dynasty uh, state, modern Gansu and Zhangzhe, the dynasty was founded by Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of the Qin. The strength of the Qin state was greatly increased by the legalist reforms of Shang Yang in the 4th century BC during the Warring States period. That's what I'm talking about with the legalization system and the governing system that they utilized and revolutionized, which would be encompassed and used by the next following dynasties. In the mid and late 3rd century BC, the Qin state carried out a series of swift conquests, first ending the powerless Zhao dynasty, and eventually conquering the other six of the seven warring states. That's very important, keep that in mind. Its 15 years was the shortest major dynasty in Chinese history, consisting of only two emperors, but inaugurated an imperial system that lasted with interruption and ad adaptation until 1912. So roughly, this is the dynasty that would create what would be used all the way up to 1912 when it is abolished. Also, a unique fact, the terracotta army and statues that China is known for sometimes was actually made and used during the Qin Dynasty. So the conquest of the Warring States, this is where that comes into play. The Qin were swift in their assault on the other states. They started there, as you can see on the map, on their western uh, part, part of China. They first attacked the Han, directly east, and took their capital city of Zhangxing in 230 BC. Then they struck northward. They got the state of Zhao surrendered in 228 BC, and then they got the northernmost state of Yan following in 226 BC. Next, the Qin armies launched assaults to the east and later the south as well. They took the Wei city of Dalang, now called Keifeng, in 225 BC, and they also forced the Chu to surrender by 223 BC. Lastly, they deposed the Zhao dynasty's remnants in Luoyang and conquered the Qi, taking the city of Linzi in 221 BC, and they became the first complete empire of China. It is also good to note that the Qin dynasty was very effective in their good governing system and legality system, as I said earlier, that they revolutionized. Also, they were good at adapting and using the weapons of their conquered foe and utilizing them very well on the battlefield with good leadership. So, with that, let's get into the weaponry, what the armor was that the Qin used to conquer. So, for their melee, they used bronze swords, although very rarely compared to the pole arms and long range weapons that they also used. The sword is found in much fewer graves and battle sites than the uh, pole arms and other armaments are. So, they also used the bill hook. The bill hook is a often well found weapon that was used during the Qin Dynasty. There was also the spear. There was a wide variety of spears used, however, with five to six major different spearheads that were utilized by the Qin Dynasty, as you can see in this picture here, depicting the different widths and lengths of these spearheads. There was also the dagger axe, which is very similar to the head of a halberd or the head of a battle axe in sorts. The dagger axe was actually one of those weapons I mentioned that was utilized from Conquered Foe. It was actually used by the Zhao, but adapted and used by the Qin Dynasty after their defeat. There was also the halberd, but their halberd was very different than the western. It was actually quite literally just a combination of the spear and the dagger axe, which was lashed together with rope and sometimes metal working. Although it's not as well found, but it would be very common and would make sense to be used because of its hacking ability as well as its slashing and stabbing ability with its long reach. So it's not unheard of and it's not unprobable. As you can see in this picture, a very well demonstrated form and all these pictures, well, most of these pictures I got from China, uh, TravelChinaGuide.com, which is actually very helpful. I learned a lot because I'm not very well versed in the Chinese and other Asian history, as well as I am in European. So for me, this website was very great, and I loved learning new things about, especially these rich cultures as the Asian countries. So to 
with the armament, there's also the battle axe. There are a lot of depictions of soldiers using battle axes because ever since the Dawn of Man, the axe has always been a go-to weapon. And all their weapons, almost all of their melee weapons were made of bronze, as are these battle axe heads here, which you can see the bronze. There was also the shoe, which I'm not entirely sure what the shoe was used for, although I do know it was mostly, if not entirely, for ceremonial purposes, which you can see its odd shape here. There was also a form of bayonet used. It's like the spear, and it's, I think, one of the ones shown in that spear de demonstration in the last slide. However, the shaft was made of a different wood and much different, and also the way that the head was attached to the shaft was entirely different in its formation. And as well as, this spearhead is very different composed to the normal thinking of a spearhead, where this one is more of just a sharpened cylinder, kind of like the shoe. And, and the bayonet was used com uh, paired up with their crossbow, kind of like when I mentioned in one of my earlier videos how the pike and shot was the iconic way of the 18th century, 16th, 17th century warfare. So you could see how you give some men a bayonet spear, and then you give them uh, the job to protect crossbowmen, you can see how that can work very well. So speaking of which, we get into the ranged armament. So they had a crossbow, a very good crossbow, may I say, although very different compared to the western brothers and sisters of the crossbow that were being used at this time. So the arrowhead that were used with this strong crossbow was a very unique bronze arrowhead used and made completely different than western civilization used and it was very unique and strong in its formation and usage. The crossbow, uh, although stronger and more impactful, was not good at the reload time or, sh or rate of fire and therefore the crossbow was at a slight disadvantage to normal bows although it was utilized very well by the Qin Dynasty as far as I'm able to tell. So with that, we wrap up this A Day in the Life episode. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Shield Brother 6. If you have to like this comment and this type of content, go ahead and leave me a like. If you don't, you can leave me a dislike. If you have a comment, suggestion, or concern, you can leave that down for me in the comment sections down below. And as always, this has been Shield Brother 6, and I'll catch you all next time.